you obviously played here for four years and through in these four years there's been like a lot of great players who have come through here obviously so uh maybe talk a little bit about like uh who you formed like who uh, of the players who are in the nba now who you formed the best relationship with and just uh, maybe speak to them like how they are as a person and um like what it takes to be like such a great player in college and be able to move on to the next level yeah so um my freshman year uh, i played with um kavan um Lenny. came through here yeah, yeah. Kavon Lenny. Uh, he's with the warriors now um he was also a really cool guy he's personable um also just, he just played hard like the biggest thing is just having a worth ethic work ethic just respect in. that always yeah just playing like he in the tournament, in the Pac-12 tournament, he broke his face, and he still played the next game. Wow. Yeah, and so I think that reflects a lot on you know you as a player. Um, I played with Jonah Bolden, two cool guys out in, I think, uh, somewhere in the Middle East playing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think he'll get picked up by the Sixers or something. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but I wish him the best in his career. You know? <laughs> he, wasn't, he didn't work quite as hard, you know, as... That's Kavon, but he's got a lot of talent. And then players like TJ. Mm. Of course. Yeah. Um, no, he was he was a pretty good friend, actually. Here's what I said last week. I'll tell you what I said last week. <laughs> so I said, if Jalen leaves, yeah, yeah. and um, the only point guard they have left is Tiger, I said, maybe Prince at the one. Because I know <laughs> Prince has been talking about how he's been working on his ball handling and how, like, you know, the point guard position now are, like, athletes who can get up the floor quickly and, like, pass, maybe not the best yeah. shooters and, like, that's exactly how he plays. So he was talking about maybe taking over the one. But, like, what do you think about that? Um, I saw flashes uh, this past summer where he just kind of took over as a point guard when we didn't really have anybody in that spot. Um, I think Tiger will do a pretty good job running the team. I think he'll be the true point guard. Cause that's that's his style of game. He'll be able to facilitate everybody. I think Prince would want to get more shots up. Yeah. And he wouldn't be able to as much as a point guard. So I think he would probably prefer, you know, like a shooting guard playing off the ball but uh, it could work okay yeah so so your first three years uh if people listening don't know so like being a walk-on you like you practice with the team um and you don't get maybe as much minutes as a scholarship players but there are opportunities for you to play and this year mm-hmm. you played against sc correct yeah right yeah so just talk about how that was like your four years like coming here and like you know not really playing as much and then like getting the opportunity to like get on the floor and like play against like some of the best players in the country just talk a little bit about um, how that was? Yeah, so just playing in practice all the time, and then just riding the bench. It's kind of it takes its toll. Yeah. But I mean, to be able to get some minutes was it was awesome. Um, just, and score. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's so, true. <laughs> Jalen was out um, his ankle or something in practice, so coach just told me to be ready. Like, you know, you've been practicing well, like you've been playing well throughout your career here so you know I, I believe in you just shoot the ball like do what you do <laughs> and so I didn't really think it was going to happen because like we've been in that position before you know uh-huh. so I was just kind of like yeah whatever. And, yeah yeah if I do go on just you know whatever it's just like no regrets just play hard just do what you can do and so I went in and I was like oh man just kind of looked around I was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> real it was, it was pretty cool wow yeah, yeah. so I it was open a couple of times. It was like, ah, I can't really shoot that one. Then I was just wide open. They just left me open, so I put it up. <laughs> I just went in, so. Yeah, I know, like, you are saying you're on the bench, but, like, making that first shot on, on a college basketball floor, like, knowing may- maybe it's televised, you know, like, just, like, tell me about the feeling. Like, what's going through your head? Oh, man. I... Well, the first shot I hit was against, like, North Carolina in, um, in the Brooklyn Nets arena. Mm. And it was kind of wow. like a, a similar feeling. I just kind of, I just wasn't really thinking a whole lot. It was just kind of. It's just all second nature. Yeah, it's just kind of you do it all the time, and so I just, it's kind of like I just threw it up there, but you know, I got a pretty good shot, so I had a pretty good chance of going in. Yeah, I didn't really think about it too much, but. Yeah. yeah so um, I want to digress a little bit and maybe talk about like the academic side of uh, being a student athlete. Um, yeah, definitely. What's so that, what's that like? So yeah, so like yeah. You, you talked about having a three nine in high school, obviously. So like you did your work. Um, yeah. Then coming to like the number one public university in UCLA and being a geography major, which uh, if those don't know, like the athlete major here is social, and so like most of the athletes are sociology. But being a geography major, like just talk about how difficult it was to like balance being 
even though you weren't like playing as much on the team, you still had to be at all the practices yeah, and do all the it's things. It's still that a huge time commitment, do, you know? of course. So just talk about that a little huge bit. Huge time commitment. So coming in here, I struggled my first quarter a little bit because college is just a huge transition. Oh, yeah. You have so much, you know, more time to procrastinate and you could just set things off until like a few days before if you want to study. Yeah. So, <laughs> that didn't work out too well for me, but, you know, I, I recovered. Um, it was just tough because you travel all the time so you're gone last time maybe from like wednesday to sunday wow something. and then so you miss like you miss like half almost your half your classes wow and like a, a quarter like winter quarter stuff wow and then you like during practice practice days you're there from like say like practice at one you got to get there kind of early to tape and then practice is like three hours and you kind of shower and eat after so it takes like five hours out of your day and then you have film too sometimes so it takes like five hours out of the day and then you get home and you got to study you know because you got you know a lot, of, a lot of work to do and you sit on the couch and it is, you can't get back up <laughs> and you're like fuck <laughs> so yeah. it's like a nap uh, yeah so i'll pass out sometimes and then like <sighs> when i try and stand up again it's just like i'm already sore it's oh like my god moved, dude i can't imagine it takes a lot um, wow yeah a lot of commitment a lot of a lot of hard work i'm sure dude wow that's crazy um, and how are you feeling now? You're four years in. You got your schedule down, or is it still tough? Tell, tell us about that. You yeah, got it well, down I, yet, or what? I got <laughs> it down, but I'm just I'm ready to, to graduate, get out of here. So it's <laughs> so I still kind of put it off sometimes. Just, yeah. So tell tell us a little bit a bit a bit about the you know the future for you. Of course, you're gonna still play basketball. You know, you've been playing your whole life. You know, you're not gonna drop basketball. But you know, if you don't mind us asking, like you know, what what's your what you know what, what's the future plan looking like for you? Um. So my plan. Is, is going to grad school for architecture. Yeah, I just got into nice. school um, in San Diego. For Good for you. Yeah. So it's a three-year program where I get my license and then design houses from there. That's so huge. Yeah. Dude, that, that's huge that you were able to play college basketball and keep your grades up enough to get into a grad school. Like, that's that's really amazing. Yeah. Uh, are you going to, like, maybe be a, G, a GA there or a grad assistant for those who don't know? Um, no, I just... Yeah, just what's a grad assistant? Is that like a TA? You mean? Yeah, so a grad assistant is like someone who like goes to the graduate school and they also like help out with the basketball team. They're like they're, oh, not, wow. they're not really like a coach, but they're kind of like just someone who's like there to help out. You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the school I'm going to is just just arts and design. Okay. School. So where does basketball fit in? You have any idea? You're just gonna go to a local gym and ball people up, and make yeah, them I'll make still, them look bad. Yeah, I'll still play, work out all the time. Um, I thought about going overseas, but you know, I figured I'd try something else. Yeah. Okay, for sure. So oh, okay, yeah. yeah so um, I have a kind of tribute to the seniors. We kind of, you know, they're all always the most set back by it. How was Bryce? Um, he was a little emotional, but you know, um, as you know, like Tom was this year. Um, yeah, it's four years, and then you're done. And yeah, you know, it goes by fast. So, like, you, you never think it's it's gonna happen that quickly, and then it does. So, uh, I'm really um, just. Oh yeah, um, he just got more comfortable, I guess. Uh, I, for him, I don't know if it was confidence, but he just looked a lot more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like in the NBA, he just he adapts really well. Yeah. Um, like he picked up his stats, everything. Um, his shots start to fall, and like once he starts seeing that go in, mm -hmm. he's pretty pretty tough to guard. Um, but it was just a comfort thing for him, I guess. His, he was really good. Um, I guess maybe the the line being a little further back messed him up a little bit, but yeah. he got used to it. And when he did, it was pretty hard to stop. Mm -hmm. Practice, so he I play as well as he could in the games. He he loved this university. And yeah, he put in a ton of effort and a ton of hard work. Okay, so uh, maybe moving on to this year, maybe just talk a little bit about how the style of play changed. You know, losing Lonzo and TJ and Bryce and Isaac. You know all the starters, um, and then you come in with a new all, uh, couple All Americans, Chris Wilkes, Jalen Hans. Obviously, the style of play is going to change because you have different kind of players. Mm -hmm. So maybe just talk about like how practice. Yeah, um, it was completely different. Um, this team didn't mesh nearly as well as last year. Like they didn't move the ball as well, um, and you can kind of see with the freshmen, they you know got selfish at times. Mm -hmm. it's, you know they want to get to the league too, so yeah. they want to put their own numbers up, and you see that happen sometimes, and everybody kind of goes their own way and they all start you know trying to get their own shots up and so that that happened you know a little bit um 
and then there was two players that you kind of had to get the ball to, you know, for our, if we like wanted to, you know, keep up with other teams. You know, Tom had Aaron. to get his shots up. Yeah, and then Aaron was always someone you could rely on. Yeah, always. absolutely. Um, okay, so moving back to you, uh, just speak a, speak on a little bit how like being a student athlete like added to your college experience because I know like for myself like not being a student athlete like I know I have a lot more time and um to like maybe do different things but you know you also have the advantage of like meeting people that could set you up like later maybe like networking or different things like that or maybe even just go as far as writing UCLA basketball on an application and like the weight that holds so just talk about a little bit about like how uh like playing basketball here is going to help you in the future Uh um what what made you decide not to go overseas? Was there something that happened, or um, it was just four years of basketball, um, and especially like, not playing a lot, um, it kind of made me, you know, look at other options, you know, what I could do, mm-hmm. um, and so I found, you know, something else that I'm actually really interested in. Um, but it just kind of, I got a little burnout on it. Yeah. Um, so it just kind of made me look at other options, what I could do, and so I. You know, I think architecture is something that, you know, I got a real future in. Yeah, so that that actually leads to my next question. Uh, you actually touched on it a little bit, but do you think that maybe playing as a walk-on um, here maybe took took away a little bit of your love for the game just because, like, you weren't able to maybe play as much? Yeah, I did. There was a lot of times where I wish I, you know, maybe went to a smaller school and played. Um, mm-hmm. But practice, playing in practice, you know, that was always fun um, just to – to keep playing but definitely it it wore me down I mean a lot just sitting there on the bench you know like yeah I could you know be out there I could be at like you know a smaller school and just smaller D1 school and just competing but you know I just I thought you know a degree from UCLA is would be you know amazing to have yeah so so if you could do it again would you go back and play at a smaller school or would you just do the same thing again wow. That's a tough question. Yeah. I, I, I tell myself I don't I have regrets, but you know I always look back and you know I could have played there, yeah. um, but I I just try not to think about it. So I you know I think I would go to school here again. Do you have like a place in mind where maybe you said like I could have played there? Is there like a college that was recruiting you maybe? Um, something like Cal Cal Poly. Okay. Like you know, um, Santa Barbara. Okay. Most schools like that. UCSB. <laughs> yeah. Okay, for sure. So he kind of taught me the importance of shooting, um, but I think he was in. He played in college a little bit. I think Where Northern, at? Northern Iowa. Okay. Yeah, he was on the team for a little bit. Yeah. And then from there, he got a few jobs local, and then yeah. So um, after you uh, go to graduate school and gra- graduate with your degree and stuff like that, what what uh. Where do you see yourself like settling down, or like you know, like maybe doing life after that? Um, if I had to settle down, one place would probably be San Diego. Okay, I love it down there. Really? Like yeah. Where? Um, like Wahala? Where? 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 Cardiff, Del Mar, like Mancho Santa Fe, that that whole area okay. around there. Yeah, I love that. Um, I'd also love to just travel a lot, you yeah. know, because as an architect, you get to work on stuff on your own. Mm-hmm. You don't have to follow. You know, rules of someone else, so you're gonna kind of work on your own projects. It's more personal. So I'd, I'd like to do a lot of traveling and working and work on projects. You know, and more remote places or kind of, you know, like go to Indonesia, Fiji, Australia. Kind of work on some projects out there. For sure. Uh, so uh, being on the basketball team, you also got to travel. And the most recent one was China. So talk a little bit about um, like the experience, just being able to like you know, like leave the country and go see other places while playing basketball. Yeah, it's taken me a lot of places. You know, we went to the Bahamas, Australia, and then in China. Wow. And so we were out there. We didn't get a, you know, go out you know, on our own a lot, especially after the incident. Um, so we kind of just stuck on, like, to the bus and stuff. I wanted to, you know, go explore on my own, but... Like the hotel was sweet. We had a awesome view. Um, the city was unreal. I mean, the place is huge, and all those people was kind of it's like whoa. Great Louis V stores out there, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> highly protected too. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't see any cameras. <laughs> I'm looking around. <laughs> I got pretty good technology, I guess. It's like built in it's like mirrors or something. You just can't see them. <laughs> I guess I was like, yeah, that's I crazy. <laughs> Um, talk talk a little bit about um, Australia. I know I've always wanted to go to Australia. So how yeah, was, how Australia was is sweet. Yeah, people got a good lifestyle out there. Um, what, what did you guys do like together as a team? Uh, we went surfing once as a team. Um, we uh, hiked a bridge, the city bridge. It was cool. We went to the opera house, took a tour of the opera house. Um, we were in Melbourne, so I took a tour on the city there. So I, we did a, a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. I'm really glad we went. I'm thankful, cause, you know so, how hard they work. Um, if you can just being a good person. If you know. could name like one story that he's told, that's like like after practice, like guys, this, this, and that. Because I, I totally feel you. Like my coach is the same thing. Like always would relate like life to bas- to baseball. I played baseball for four years. Yeah. So like if, if there's like one thing that comes to mind that like he's taught you, like what would you say? It's like a really good story, or, like um, life lesson. <laughs> something coming from Alfred was uh he'd always tell a story when he was at Indiana and Coach Knight <laughs> would always give him a bunch of shit for like um he was like the um best basketball player in Indiana. He got Mr. Basketball in Indiana and Coach Knight was like, I don't care, like blah 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 all this stuff. He was be in his ear all the time about it. And so he just kinda when you have players come through here and, you know, they got a pretty big head and a big ego. Yeah. Um, you can always tell that story and kind of, like, what have you accomplished so far? It's like there's still a long road ahead of you. And and it takes it takes a ton of, you know, just, just hard work day in and day out. It's kind of, you preach that a lot. Don't have that ego until you got there. And just, yeah, give, yeah. It, give it your all. You know, every day, and you'll see you'll see the benefits. Just to just to clarify for those uh, who are listening, uh, Coach Bobby Knight at Indiana was like one of the most fiery coaches in the history of college basketball. He yeah. would throw chairs, he would the cuss out refs, he would chairs, yeah. he would do the most. So um, the the fact that uh, he rubbed off on Steve, maybe do you, do you see a little bit of Bobby Knight and Steve during practice or anything like that? Yeah, our coach gets fired up. <laughs> he gets fired up uh, half times. He, he gets pretty angry um, for for good reason. As he should, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some reflection um, and some parallels to Coach Knight. He also puts up a quote from him in the locker room. So, do you think do you think you could ever see Steve maybe coaching at the next level, like like at an NBA level? Why or why not? Um, I think he's more of a college level coach. Um, because that's where he's had the most success in his career, I think, and that's where you can relate to players better. Um, because in, in college, you're not making millions of dollars. It's kind of what's your um, like, what's your what's your drive? Like, why are you why are you playing? And like, what what's the point to work this hard day in and day out? And so I think he can relate to players better on that level than to players who, you know, kind of want to take their own route and don't necessarily have to listen. Mm -hmm. Here's a question that um, a lot of UCLA students have. Um, So, like, like on campus at UCLA, the football players are like, you know, they're out here and you see them everywhere and they're always talking to everyone. They have a bunch of friends. But with the basketball team, they're, like, much more secluded and they have, like, less friends. Yeah, they're kind of clicky. But I just want to ask you, like, why do you think that is? Yeah, we just had a lot of players that um, are kind of more reserved than than really, I guess, you see some of the football players. It's kind of a team that doesn't really go out of their way. Um, I like TJ. He's a friend. He had a lot of friends, I would say. Yeah, um, but, yeah, it's just kind of players don't really reach out like that. Um that's, that's the only reason I have. So, um, being being a, a college athlete, what, what do you think about the the one and done rule? Seeing as like Zoe came here for one year, Kayvon came here for one year, like 
how do like what how do you see the rule in your eyes and do you think they should change it um i don't think there's a strong enough reason they shouldn't change it i mean you had players that went straight from high school and they've had successful careers in the nba mm-hmm. um it kind of takes away from the culture of college basketball a little bit like in the past there was you can kind of tell you know there's more four-year players like kids would work harder um they had a little more passion so it takes away from that a little bit Mm -hmm. but i mean if you're gonna put you know like a two-year limit on players and i think you won't see as many of them come through college and they might as well just go overseas for a year so it makes some money is is that to say that like when Lonzo, for instance, was on the team just for one year, do you think he wasn't like working as hard or his mind was somewhere else? Like he wasn't always with the team because he's like, oh well, I'm gonna go pro. Like why am I even here? Why does this matter? Um, I think he kind of knew that he would eventually be in the NBA, so he just. Do you think he had benefited him at all? Like, do you think it helped him out, or do you think he would have been fine if he would have just went straight? I think it, if he went straight to the NBA, there would have been a much longer transition period. Um, so, I mean, college took away from that a little bit, so it, it did help him a little bit, but it would, it would have been harder to, to play in the NBA and it would have taken him longer, um, to play better in the NBA. Do you, do you think, uh, Steve and, uh, Coach Bruce should focus on maybe recruiting more three to four year players, or do you think they should continue trying to get the five star all Americans who are one and done players? I think you need a mix, a pretty good mix of that, like, um, we had some four-year players, but not enough. Like you saw with, say, the year before this, we had more four-year players and three to four-year players, and you saw how well we did and how good we are. Yeah. Like you know Bryce Isaac, so they had a ton of experience. Yeah, and even like Tom was a junior, Gigi mm-hmm. was a junior, and so we had a lot of a lot of experience, much more than we did this year. So I think a good mix is probably best. Speaking of Bryce, uh, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how coach, I mean, like, obviously, like, I'm sure he did his best not to show favoritism, but like, what's that like, you know, having your own son on a team? Like, how, how did he treat, did he treat him differently than everyone else? Or was he good about make, keep, keeping everyone the same? Uh, it was, you could tell it was easier to get mad at him. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's his own son. Yeah. Um, it's easier to get mad, but it's also easier to love him. So, uh, that's what I'll say about it. I mean, it's not easy um, having your own kid at the program. Yeah, of course. Like this, and you're going to get a lot of a lot of hate and a lot of criticism. So I, Bryce handled it extremely well. Yeah, yeah, yeah he did. He, he did, did that really well. Um, so we're nearing the end of our interview with Alec Wolf, but I have one more question. Um, if you had to pick one player on on the team that will be here next year, or like like the guys returning. Who do you think will have like a breakout? I have a year? couple more questions after that too. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, for sure. This is my last question then. Who um, do you think will have like a breakout year? Maybe Prince, Alex, um, Jalen. You know, I say like Chris Wilkes. Okay. Returns. Yeah, he's got tremendous upside. He's got a bright future if he works hard. You, do you think he'll like focus more on like trying to get? Because I know this year he, he settled for a lot of threes and things like that. Do you think this year he'll maybe work on trying to get to the rim more and? like expand his offensive arsenal or how do you think he'll have a breakout year i think just improving his shot okay yeah he can improve his shot a lot and then once he improves his shot it'll be easier to get to the rim okay so you'll see his his game just open up a lot more if players start respecting his shot more okay so i was i was wondering if we were ever going to talk about the nba because like obviously this is a show about the nba but like we didn't which is fine i just have some like just just some questions for the fans out there just you know here so like who's your favorite nba player who who are you taking to win it? You know, win it right now. We got we got the Rockets against the Warriors, and you know we got the Cavs. Um, like you know, I, I'm you know I I, I don't want to see Cavs Warriors, so I'm gonna say Cavs Rockets. And of course, like I think LeBron's good. That's that's my feeling. But yeah, tell us a little about your you know your feeling about the NBA, if, um, if you could. Yeah, well, uh, I don't really have a favorite player, um, but you know I, I like a lot of players. I want to see LeBron win another Finals. Me too. Me too. He's, yes. <laughs> yes. It's yes. just yes. that's gonna be way too tough against a team like that. 
The Warriors, I, I think they're going to win it. Ugh, I guess either team. It would be tough for them to beat the Rockets also. It's, it's going to be tough, but yeah. the Rockets have a bad shooting night, and then they don't match up well against the Warriors because yeah. they're better. And when you take away the shooting, the Warriors, you know, I think they're still a better team. Um, so I think the Rockets could win, probably win two games, maybe three. Um, but the Warriors are, are too good. So would you say maybe LeBron is maybe close to one of your favorite players since you want to see him win another finals? And he's become... You know, up there. You, you can't can not hate LeBron, favorite. dude. Um, you can't. How can you hate LeBron? Yeah, can't hate I, that, LeBron. That, that guy is special. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something else. Yeah, you, you just, it's fun watching him. So. Who, do, in your opinion, who's the greatest player ever? Um, there's a, there's a right answer to this. <laughs> there, there is. There absolutely is. <laughs> Dang, um, I think, but by, by the end of LeBron's career, it's gonna be LeBron. There we go. Okay. I like that answer a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too, me too. <laughs> it's, it's hard to say because I've, I've heard so many people just say you can't compare anyone to Michael, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I've never really seen him play. So yeah. I think LeBron will pass him. 